This is the Car Chronicles. This is just the Car Chronicles. I do not own the rights to this music. Blessings, everybody, to uh, young men, older men, women, and children, teenagers, and all. Um, God bless you all. Uh, I'm not, you know, here to uh, do anything but just share things that God puts on my heart. For those who don't know, um, I make videos, I drive around, and I talk about different issues and then things out of the Bible, um, however God leads. And Lord, I pray that you add a, a blessing to the hearers and the doers of your word in Jesus' name. Um, I just I just want to come out here and tell you guys. made a video the other day about people basically fear-mongering, right? Making all these videos, putting fear in the public so that they'll continue to go what? Be in panic and be in heightened states of frantic and not having peace. Oh my goodness, that was a huge crater. And the thing about it is we see that even the president and people that are pushing this, you know, fear, 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 wars and rumors of wars. I was I was talking about Matthew 24. And the, the sad thing is, y'all, is that there, it's the part of their agenda, you know, pushing this different mandates and things like that. But um, at the end of the day, we serve a mighty God who is still in control. And this is what I want y'all to hear is that God is still in control. Okay. No matter where you're from, where you live in, where you are right now, here in this video, whether it's it's today or 20 years from now, okay? This is the end of March, and we're in 2022. And so, I don't know where you guys are, but I want you to hear this one thing. The enemy is running out of time, okay? And the devil is going to do what he can do to try to kill, steal, and destroy, okay? Because this is his job, all right? to kill, steal, and destroy. And you gotta remember that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And so I want you guys to really understand that in the midst of all this chaos and trouble, come on now, you got to know that God is the one who rules all. He is the same God that tells when the moon to come out and when the, the sun to go away. When the stars you can see in the sky, or the clouds, or however, when it rains, when it pours, when it hails, when it snows. God is still in control. Like, so many people are afraid. And I don't get it, you guys. I don't get it. Because, you know what? God is the one who has control of everything. So, please do not be fearful. Please do not be worried. And please do not put your trust in men or the things of this world. And I believe that's what God is doing, is he's teaching us to put our trust in him, not in the things of this world, not in men. Because God, he knows everything before it happens, right? He knows everything. He has all, everything already written in the stars has been written. I don't even want to say written in the stars because I don't think that's a biblical, I think that's just a worldly thing. But look, it's been written before we even worked it out, lived it out, breathed it out. Okay? So, first thing, don't panic. Second thing, use wisdom. Okay? If it's on your heart to buy a house, get some land, some property, do it. Incoming call. Okay? Phone call completed. So then, another thing I want you guys to hear is this. If it's your time to grow some props, start preparing, having a storehouse, do it. Do whatever God puts on your heart to do. But don't be fearful and do not be afraid because the devil wants you to operate in fear. Fear is the opposite of faith, okay? So let's walk in faith, not in fear. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 1. He lets us walk by faith, not by sight. And when they tell you there's a storm coming, there's a, there's, there's a war coming, there's you know, the Antichrist is coming. All this. Jesus is coming. That, that is for sure. We don't know the day nor hour when he's going to come. So we need to always be ready for that season. In season, out of season, it don't matter. Have yourself ready. Get your household prepared. And I'm talking about spiritual preparedness, okay? We can always go into the physical later. But right now, God is wanting us to come back to him. Return to your first love, which is Jesus Christ. Return yourself back unto him. Give your hearts to him. Repent. Even this song is saying it. 
listen. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be fearful, okay? Because this is what the world does. The Bible says that we're in this world, but not of this world. To be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why did God tell us that? Because he knew the way we grew up, the ways of this world, is not God's ways. It is actually going against his ways and what he has for us, what he's designed for us. Because the world has gotten lost in the ways of sin. That is the truth. But God made a way for us to be reconciled and restored unto him. And that is by the way of Jesus Christ. That is by reading his holy word and renewing your mind. Why do you need to renew your mind? Because look, that is your soulish man. The the the, the mind, okay, your, your thoughts, your will, your emotions, your mind, your will, your emotions. That's who you are. But we we are as we are a spirit being. Okay, I've talked about this before, Holy Spirit, have your way. We are all spirits living inside of this fleshly body, okay? So when we die, our spirit, which possesses our soul, okay, that's who we are, is going to leave this body. Why do they people say they sell their soul to the devil? Because their soul is their mind, their will, their emotions. Why did God tell us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds? Because it is a mind. You have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, praise God. So that what you do on this earth is not pleasing to yourself, but it is pleasing to who? God. When God tells you to love your enemies, you walk two miles with them if they ask you to walk one. If they ask you, if they smack you on one cheek, you let them smack the other. If they steal your coat, you give them your t-shirt too. And I'm paraphrasing, y'all. God's ways are not our ways, but his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts than our thoughts. But we have so much become accustomed to this worldly knowledge and these worldly ways of thinking instead of being focused on heaven and what God really wants for us to do. We get focused on the things of this world. So renewing our mind daily with his word. That means we read his word, but we don't just read it. We read it out loud so we can hear it because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God so that your faith muscle can grow. You got to read his word, renew your mind. That is renewing the soulish man. That that soulish man can now be what? Like God. Okay, so when you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in an unclean vessel. Right? I hate I feel like I'm, I'm yelling. I'm sorry. You cannot be an unclean vessel and have the Holy Spirit living in you. That's why you have to get born again into the spiritual rebirth. And when the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside with you, right? Because you are a temple. The temple of what? The Holy Spirit. So, your, who you are is a spirit inside of this flesh. So, the Holy Spirit is now living in with you, right? Now, you have been made new in the spirit. But now, the, the mind has to be what? Renewed. How does that happen? By reading the word of God. This is why the devil, you heard them people say the, the battlefield of the mind. 
it is in your mind because that is where the enemy constantly attacks you because he wants your mind. If you have a person's mind, you got the rest of their body too. Two for one. So you have to continue to renew your mind so you can put on the mind of Christ. So you can put off the carnal man, the carnal mind that is of, of this world. You were taught that, oh, you know what? You know, bump the haters, do you? Bump them, forget about them. That's not God's way. God's way is to love your neighbor, right? Pray for them, encourage them, even provoke them to come to Jesus. How do you do that? By loving them through it all. Loving them through the hate, the anger, the bitterness. Love them through when they hurt you and hate you and abuse you. Love them and forgive them. Forgive them so you can be forgiven. All the things that God tells us to do, it makes no sense to the carnal mind. That's why you have to renew your mind with his word. So he can begin to teach you his ways, not our ways, but his ways. Okay? I don't. I, praise God, I wasn't even going here. This is the Holy Spirit. So somebody needs to hear this. Listen. We are three-part beings, just like triune God. He is three parts. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? The Father God himself, Son, Jesus himself, and the Holy Spirit, right? They are still one. The Trinity, the one God. Three different, um, you know, operations. Still one God. The same way, we are three in one. So, we are a spirit that lives inside of this flesh that possesses a soul. You hear what I'm saying? So this is what you guys need to hear. God has made us in his likeness, in his image. But yet we are not a deity. We are not gods. There is no gods, uh, lowercase g, right? That have deity and authority. Now they might portray to be gods, but they are not the one who created the heaven and earth and all that's in between and around. God himself, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the great I am. Okay? Okay. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, the only beloved. But he also is a part of God. There's three parts in one that came here in the flesh. And that was the only way he could overcome sin and death. Because why? He's deity. He is God in the flesh. That he has the authority to trample over serpents and snakes. The devil, death, hell, Hades, the enemy, sickness, death, disease, everything. Only God can overcome that because he is God. So you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Three in one. So I want you guys to hear this because it was, I mean, God was telling me no more fear. No more fear. No more fear. No more riding in fear. No more living in fear. No more being in fear, period. The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Not fear, man. Not fear what men can do to you. Not fear what men can try to throw you in jail, throw you in prison. So what if you don't take a, 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 a jab? So what if you don't take their mandate? So what? What can they do to you? Matthew 10 and 28. You better fear the God who can send your butt to eternal hell than to fear a man and what can man do? Nothing compared to what God can do. You don't want God to judge you. You heard them songs from Tupac, only God can judge me. Yes, but if he judges you, that means that is condemnation and you're going to hell. You do not want a holy and righteous God to judge you because we will be judged for every single sin that we committed here. And there is no grace for that unless you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Unless you've been born again and bought by the blood of the lamb who was slain for us, who is Jesus Christ. That is the only way you can get remission of sins. The only way you can be forgiven is by the way of Jesus Christ. There is no person that is good enough on this earth. None of us is good. None of us is holy. Not one man is righteous. Only God who came down here himself. This is why the problem with people, well, this was the Bible was written and blah, blah, blah. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word is God. And in other translations, the Bible says the father, the word and the spirit. The word is Jesus in the flesh. People don't realize when they read that word, what that word, that word is alive. Why people go to church, they get healing, delivered and set free. Why when people hear the word, they get revelation and they get healing and deliverance. Why they get conviction and correction. Because you're hearing the word of God. As you hear me speaking to you, it is not me, but it is the word of God. His word that goes forth and does what it was set out to do. It will not return to him void. Praise the Lord. This is not about me. This is not about my calling, who I am, where I live, what I do. This is all about Jesus Christ glorifying him, saving souls for Jesus. Praise the Lord. And that folks will get saved, healed, delivered, and set free. 
we need to come back to the father who died. He gave his only son for us. That we can be restored unto him. God the father. That we can be in heaven with him forever. Because remember, one day there's going to be a new heaven and new earth, y'all. This ain't going to be here. All this is going to pass away. He's going to do everything new. So, I had to go here for whatever and praise the Lord. Holy Spirit led me to say all this. Somebody need to hear this. If you have any kind of questions, feel free to ask. God bless you. You got to know that God loves us. And he, every little thing, everything we do here counts. Every little part counts. Every time you help somebody, every time you bless somebody, every time you 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 let a person check out online before you, you let a per you help a person walk across the street, you help a person they, they drop their stuff, you you give a person a kind word, you do kind things. Those are the things that God wants us to do. He wants us to have it on earth as it is in heaven. He wants us to look out for our neighbors. He wants us to pray for those. So a person who's on drugs, a person who's who is dirty and dusty and homeless, a person who smells bad, a person who doesn't look pretty to your ideal idea of beautiful. That doesn't matter. God is looking at the hearts of men. How are we going to live with each other in eternity if we cannot live to learn together here? How is it going to be if we stand before a righteous and holy God and he says to you, what did you do with your life, son, daughter? What did you do? Did you help a person? Did you care for them? Did you judge a person by how they looked or smell or were you mean to them? Or, or did you make fun of them? Or did you shun them because they didn't look like you, talk like you, or act like you? That is not God's way, y'all. We are supposed to love people to Christ. Love them unconditionally. Regardless of our indifferences and differences, we are supposed to love people because the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. Love covers a multitude of sin. My love will draw them to repentance. God, everything he said and did was in love. His love, not the world's love. Agape love that endures forever. It is unconditional and it never fails. It always hopes, always trusts, always perseveres, but his love never fails. That is the love, sir, ma'am, children, wh whoever you are, that God wants us to have in this place. Okay? So I love you guys. I've been driving and talking and driving and talking. I love you guys. This is the Car Chronicles, okay? It's not about me. I don't got to put my face on here. You don't got to know who I am. You don't got to know my name. What you got to know is that Jesus Christ is the only way that you can be forgiven. It is all about Jesus. And if you don't know him, it's so simple to ask him into your heart, into your life. Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I know that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you died and you rose. And I'm asking you to come into my life, come into my heart. Forgive me and be my Lord and savior. Have mercy on me. I repent. In Jesus' name, Lord, be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Romans 10 and 9. All right. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever so believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 10 and 9. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died and he rose from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, get around other believers who know the Lord, who, who, who spend time in prayer and worship and fasting. Get in a Bible-based church where they're teaching the truth. And how do you know if it's the truth? Because you'll study for yourself so you know whether or not they're teaching the truth or the false. So, I love you guys. I pray for you. Please pray for me. And remember, it's not about your big sis. This is not about me. This is about Jesus. I don't have no name that's important to anybody. My name, as long as it's in the Lamb's Book of Life, hallelujah. That's the only thing I care about. I love you guys. Again, pray for me as I pray for you. Please pray for these car chronicles. Please share them. People need to hear this. If it's on your heart, please feel free to uh, message me, subscribe, share, and like all that good stuff. I love y'all. God bless you. May he keep you in Jesus' name. This is the car chronicles. All the kids ain't with me right now, but the car chronicles, and I'm out. <laughs>